I'm here with filmmaker Corky Quasenbush of Space Bass Films. If hello. people, <laughs> oh hello, <laughs> if people watching this don't recognize your name, they'll certainly recognize you as the animator for some of the stop motion film portions of Mad TV. How did that come about? Well, it came about because some friends of mine were writing on the show. And um, I kind of came into the program kind of after the first show had already been in the can. And uh, a producer at Fox found my reel and, and gave it to the executive producers of MAD. And they really wanted to hire me to do some stuff like that, and they wanted to license some of the stuff I'd already done. But the show had already gotten going, and uh, the executives on the money end of the thing said uh, that, they didn't have any extra money for things like that I do. Uh, but it just so happened that these friends of mine who were writing, Spencer Green and Mary Bellano, uh, came to me around November and said, hey, you know, we know that they couldn't hire you to do these things, but um, there's a, we're writing a little special for the Christmas special that's a parody of Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, as if Martin Scorsese had directed it. Can you do something like that? And I said, yeah, absolutely. So um, that was uh, my way of doing it. I gave them a budget which was reasonable, and they came back and went, <gasps> yeah, thanks, but no thanks. So I said, well, you know, I really think that Mad TV is the show for me, so I'm going to do this one for you for cost, just so you can find out if it's for you. So we did this for basically next to nothing in about three weeks, and it turned out to be the biggest hit I probably had on Mad TV. Raging that was in December 1995. The one thing... Since then, I've done... Oh, excuse uh, In the first four seasons, I did 36 shorts, and then last year, I think we did 10 or 12 for Mad TV. The one thing that is immediately obvious about your work is the true love of the medium, as a respect for those who came, who came before. Who are your idols? Well, I think I, um, the first thing I ever saw in stop motion was uh, um, Art Clokey's Davy and Goliath. And uh, I was, uh, you know, basically a preschooler, I think, at the time. I might have been five. Maybe I was in kindergarten. And um, I was awestruck by this animation, which obviously was animation, and yet had this tactile quality to it. I could see that it was three-dimensional, something that if it was there in front of me, I could actually reach out and touch, and that fascinated me. Then when I saw Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer after that, I was uh, even more taken because that I knew was the same kind of quality. And then, of course, when I got older, I started to appreciate Ray Harryhausen. And uh, that pretty much gave me all the, you know, primed me for uh, getting into stop motion animation. And I started doing it when I was about 13. Since so many years have passed since Gumby and, rank and Ranking Bass cartoons were made, I'm correct in assuming that you recreated all these characters? Yeah, everything we did, we, we tried to duplicate as closely to the original as we could without any kind of trademark infringement. When I spoke with Phil Amar recently, he credited working with you as his breakthrough in voice animation, you know, voice work. In fact, many Mad TV stars are now on demand for voice work. Did this incredible talent pool influence the direction that took some of these people? Well, I think so, although Phil Lamar and everybody else who worked on the show are tremendously talented people. So I think that sometimes... Um, uh, people fall into the things that they're most easily recognized. Like, I came from a live-action background, and animation was used to be about 10% of my business. But then after Mad TV, it kind of shifted to almost 100% of my business. I do very few live-action things now. But um, I think that's mostly because there becomes a call for those things. So whereas people like, you know, Phil are very talented voice actors, are, are very talented, you know, on-camera actors also, I think he gets called upon so often to do other voices because he's such an incredible mimic that he, you know, finds himself more easily traveling along that path. So a lot of people, like, in, you know, in that sort of situation will find it easier to do more voice work than live action? Or? 
Sometimes, yeah, especially if they get, um, you know, seen like Phil Lamar is seen. He's such a talented, you know, actor, and on top of being a talented actor, has the ability to duplicate the quality of other people's voices. So not only can he do uh, original characters with his own voice, but he can also do a lot of celebrity impersonations that are dead on. Since the models used in stop motion animation are animated in one frame at a time, it must have been a tremendous amount to do. And to put this into perspective, how long would it take to do a 60 second commercial? Well, everything really depends on the amount of detail. And it also depends on the number of characters involved and how intricate the movements are. Uh, it can be anywhere. If it's just a talking head or one character in front of a camera, we could do a minute in just a few days. But if it's something like uh, if you happen to catch the uh, Chevrad commercial that we did for Mad TV, it was a parody of the um, the Chevron commercials that uh, part of Wallace and Gromit fame did for Chevron. Uh, we had an explosion in there. That was a 45-second piece, and it took us about three weeks to do the whole thing. The explosion itself took about the better part of a day, and that was only about 16 frames. So base, so basically, it like depends on ba basically the nooks and crannies of it, more or less. Yes, everything, everything adds or detracts from how easy it is. It would be the same as in live action filmmaking. If you had one character who was giving dialogue or a monologue in front of a wall, it would be much easier than setting up Brad Pitt on a beach in Troy with an army of ten thousand people behind him. <laughs> 